Hi guys, in this lesson I'm gonna go over 10 different arpeggios you can use to make lines over a dominant 7th chord. When you're improvising over a chord, like a dominant 7th chord in this case, it's very useful to have a different set of arpeggios that you can use, because the arpeggios are building blocks of the melodies that you're making when you're improvising. So in this lesson I'm going to go over 10 different arpeggios that you can use when you're improvising over a dominant 7th chord. The dominant 7th chord that I'm going to be concerned with in this lesson is just the plain old Mixolydian dominant 7th chord, so there's no alterations, there's no sharp 11, it's not, it's not a Lydian dominant. It's just basic uh, 5 chord in a major key. And uh, the way I'm going to go over this is also I'm going to talk about the arpeggio a bit and then I'm going to use it in a line that resolves from the 5 to the 1. So the most basic way to use it. Of course, you can also use it uh, in, in a situation where it's like a static uh, dominant 7th chord, some sort of Mixolydian vamp or something like this. Uh, the lines will work just as well for that, but um, just to choose something, I chose to put it in this context of a tonal uh, 5 chord resolving to a 1. So the chord progression I'm using in this lesson is just a plain old C7 resolving to uh, an F major 7. And um, everything is just out of the F major scale, and all the arpeggios are found in the F major scale. And we're of course relating them to the 5 chord in that F scale, so that's uh, C7. Uh, let's just get started. So the first most basic arpeggio you of course need to work on when you want to make lines on a C7 chord or any dominant 7th chord is the arpeggio of the chord itself. So in this case, the C7 arpeggio, which uh, in one octave might be this. And if I made a line with that, uh, resolving to an F major 7, it's going to be something like this. The second place you want to look is uh, on the third of the chord. So in this case, for a C7, the third is an E, and the arpeggio that you have there is an E half diminished. So that would be this arpeggio. And um, a line with that could be something like this. So, um, just to talk a bit about the line, I mean, I'm just playing up the arpeggio and then resolving that by going down. Uh, the scale, and then using this sort of bebop cliché, uh, adding a chromatic uh, leading note between the the C and to so the root and the seventh, and resolving that to the third of the F chord. The third example is also really basic in the sense that it's also staying really close to the basic uh, chord because it's just a triad uh, found on the root, so just a C major triad in this case. Uh, if you play a C major triad, that's of course just this. And um, a line with that could be something like this. And in the same way we can use the arpeggio found on the third of the chord. So the triad found on the third of uh, C7 is an E diminished triad, that would be this. And a line might be something like this. So nothing really special going on. Um, I'm basically just running up the scale, stepwise down, scale-wise down, and then uh, this uh, small pentatonic fragment descending and resolving to the fifth of uh, F major seven. The fifth example is uh, an arpeggio that I use really a lot for a lot of different chords actually, and that's uh, major seven flat five arpeggio. Uh, on the C seven, we can use a B flat major seven flat five, so that would be this arpeggio. And uh, if you use that, you can also use this as a, as a chord voicing. Uh, you might know it as this kind of voicing for a C7 with a 13 and a 9. Um, and uh, I made a lesson on how to use this for different kinds of chords and different kinds of uh, uh, harmonies. And um, that's worthwhile checking out. It's a very useful tool because you can use it in a lot of contexts. Um, a line with this on a C7 could be something like this. The sixth arpeggio is a uh, shell voicing. So in this case, of course, there are several shell voicings you can use. Uh, one of the ones I use the most is this, uh, the one found on the third. So the E minor seven flat five or E minor seven shell voicing, and that would be this. And a line with that could be something like this. A nice way to get away from just the uh, third-based uh, harmony 
is to use uh, some force based harmonies or quarter harmony. And one of the uh, stacks of force that's really efficient on a dominant chord is uh, the one you uh, find if you take this voicing and then just only use the top bit of it, which is in fact a stack of force. So um, that would be this arpeggio. And a line with it could be something like this. Another way to introduce some arpeggios with a larger range than the standard 7th chords is to use drop 2 voicings as arpeggios. This is also something that I made a lesson on in the past that you can check out. Um, in this case, uh, for the C7 you could use the arpeggio found in the 3rd and that would be an E half diminished uh, drop 2 voicing. The arpeggio would be something like this. Of course, it's one note per string so it's a little bit difficult to play with also picking but um, I think it's quite worthwhile. A line you could make with this would be something like this. Another quarter arpeggio that I use a lot over a C7 is uh, this sort of A sus arpeggio that is like this. And the line that you could make with that would be something like this. And as a final example, when you can use stacks of fourths, you can of course also turn them around and make them stacks of uh, fifths. So one uh, voicing that works really well for that is to use the one found on the fifth of the chord. And uh, that would be this arpeggio. And a line with that could be something like this. That was 10 different arpeggios that you can use to make lines over a dominant 7th chord. Uh, as you can tell, a lot of the times I'm just taking different structures and then relating them back to the chord, so uh, it's going to be like a stack of falls, but it's going to be starting on a basic chord note, like the 3rd or the 7th, or I'm going to use a shell voicing from the 3rd or a drop 2 voicing from the 3rd. And um, I think that's the process that you go through when you're trying to find uh, arpeggios to use over any kind of chord. And um, if you want to look for more chords, because of course you can use, there are more options here than just the 10 that I went over here. And uh, that's probably the way you want to look at it. So you want to try and see how do I use this structure? How does it sound if I'm doing it from the root? How does it sound if I'm doing it from the third or the fifth or the seventh? And in that way you're gonna, probably going to come up with some more pictures that you can use and some stuff that you can add to your own uh, vocabulary when you're improvising over a dominant seventh chord. I hope you can use the stuff uh, that I went over here. Uh, the Different arpeggios are also mentioned in other lessons that I already made, so I'm going to link to those lessons in uh, the description of this video, and uh, you can check them out if you want to sort of look a bit further into how to use the different kind of uh, structures in your own solos. Uh, if you have never seen any of my videos before, then you can of course subscribe to my channel. I make a new video, a new lesson video every uh, Thursday, and I've been doing this for quite some time, so there's already really a lot of lessons on my channel to check out. Uh, if you want to stay up to date with uh, what's happening both in terms of lessons but also uh, if I'm publishing new lessons in my web store or if uh, I'm uh, touring or recording or something else then uh, you can go to my website and subscribe to my newsletter. Uh, if you want to download a PDF of the examples that I went over here you can also uh, check that out. There's a link in the description to the article that uh, accompanies this lesson and it has a PDF download of all the examples. If you have any questions or suggestions for topics or comments, then uh, leave a comment on the video. Uh, I try to get back to everybody who comments. Um, and another way to get a hold of me is, of course, to connect with me on social media. I'm on uh, Instagram and Facebook and uh, Google Plus and Twitter. So uh, there are links in the description to my accounts. So you can follow me there too. And uh, that's also a way to communicate with me if you have any questions or ideas. So uh, that's about it for this week. Thank you for watching and uh, until next week.